boys ask me, yo, Justin, man, why, why did you change? Why did God want to change your life? And I basically always tell them, I go, because I'm the least likely to change. When I walk down the street, I'm the last person people would look at and go, he's a nice guy. He's a good person. They look at me and go, who's this punk or who's this guy? Or, he probably thinks he's better than people or this and that. And when they find out I love God, all of a sudden, they're like, man, if that guy can change, I can. And so God likes to change people who nobody thinks can change. How you doing? My name's Justin Fatika. I'm here today to tell you that there is hope in life. That, that each one of us go through things. That each one of us out there are just struggling to find a purpose in life, a mission in life, a goal in life. And I struggled with that when I was growing in Erie, PA. A 17-year-old boy to an all-boys school. I'd go out and do whatever the heck I want. I disrespect my mother and I didn't even care. I would go out and use girls and not even care. And uh, One night I had a party at my house and I only knew this girl one night and I hooked up with her. I got a phone call the next week. And uh, her mother said, don't talk to my daughter. And this girl said, I can't talk to you anymore because my mother thinks you're a thug, that you're a problem child. And she doesn't want you to talk, talk to me. And so I hung up the phone. I said, okay, whatever. I'll just go for the next girl, right? I tried to live my life. I tried to do what I want, when I want, and how I want. You know what happened? I got a phone call three weeks later. And her friend called me up, not the girl, and said, Jen's pregnant. I never forget on my bedroom floor crying that night. I, I, was, I was that kid that, that, that had everything. Grew up in a nice house, a nice home. And now guess what? I'm struggling. I, I'm that, what do I do? Do I tell my parents? In this situation, a beautiful gift of sex could destroy me. And so now it became serious. It became like, man, like, I chose to do something wrong. And I had a Catholic upbringing. I had a Christian upbringing. So I knew what was right and wrong. I wouldn't go on a retreat. Or I wouldn't go to, like, church. I didn't even like to go to church. But at this time, now I'm struggling. So where else do you go, right? You go to a church, right? You go to a retreat or something or an experience. So I go on this experience for a weekend. And I didn't want to go, but I knew if I went, maybe, like, God could get me out of this mess. Well, so I go on this weekend experience, and guess what? I found out for the first time in my life that I'm forgiven, no matter what I do. That the gas tanks and the, and, and the times I disrespected my mom. And I found out that, that, you know what, like for the first time in my life, that it didn't matter what I did. What mattered was that I was loved no matter what. That there was a God out there, a king of the universe. Not my mom, not my dad, not my sister, not my friends, not my enemies. That there was a God, king of the universe, that loved me. And who am I? I'm a nobody. A, a, a just regular 17-year-old boy. And guess what? For the first time, I found out what? I was loved. Now remember, I'll never forget this. I kneeled down. And I kneeled down. And as I kneeled down and I looked up right at this cross, And I lifted my head up, and as I looked out of the cross, I'll never forget it. I said, I've lived my life for me for too long. It's not my life. It's God's life. He gave everything for me. Now it's time I give everything back. And a 17-year-old boy going back to an all-boys school with a bunch of punk people who are disrespectful. I'll never forget going back there on that Monday. Them knowing me that I was one using girls, going out and getting drunk, going out and fighting kids, going out and hurting people, having parties at my... I was the one that was going to change. And I go back that Monday and I'm changing. I'm, I'm going to live a better life. I'm not doing those things anymore. People couldn't believe it. They're like, holy cow, what happened to Fatika? They're like, it's just a phase. Well, you know what? It's not a phase. 
okay? Because I'm 27 years old, and I changed my life when I was 17. 10 years I've been trying, striving to do the right thing. You want to know how amazing and blessed my life is? I have kissed one girl. One girl pushed me a little bit to, to kiss her, and I kissed her. But I, I got out of that. That was, I can't lie. I've kissed one girl, free willing, of course, since I was 17 years old. And her name is Mary Elizabeth Fatika, and she's my wife. The key to know about life is you're going to have ups and downs, man. Everybody does. Everybody's got ups and downs. But we all want to know that we're loved. But you know what? When I have a relationship with, with God and His Son, I'm always encouraged by His words in the Bible. I'm always loved because He sent His Son to die for me on the cross. And you know what? I was the least likely person to change. I grew up with a good family. I grew up with a lot of things in my life. A lot of physical things. Had money, had, could pay, my parents could pay every bill. But you know what? God wanted to change me because a fatika loves Jesus like this? Pfft. Yeah, right. And you know what? It happened. So if you're the least likely to change, you're the least likely to give your life to Christ, to, to live for Him with all your heart, you're the one who should be listening right now. You're the one who should wake up. Because when God changes the unlikely, that's who he does his biggest stuff with. Hardest Nails Ministry, it's a funny name, but uh, it's amazing. We try to keep the message real, authentic. We like to bring Jesus in your face. Hardest Nails is all about loving, Bible-focused, and intense. We go to every different kind of Christian church, and we bring Jesus. That it's not all about denomination. It's about uniting each other together. Because we believe that Christ is the answer.